Alrighty then, Ethereal here, and uh, this video is going to be a little bit different. This isn't a dungeon or PvP video. Um, I did a building gear guide before, where I showed like the gear I was wearing and what I shot for. Um, and I'm probably going to, and I did an update, and I'm probably going to do an update again, probably after Mod 8 hits. But, I've noticed that there are a lot of people who feel the HR is a very difficult class to play, which in some respects it is. Um, so this video is for the n people new to the HR, the people who are still trying to figure out exactly how to play it. For those of you who already know, this probably will be of no help to you whatsoever, so if you don't feel like watching, go away, uh, go ahead and, you know, do whatever you're gonna do. Maybe watch one of my other videos. <laughs> Shameless plug. Um, and it's going to, it is going to involve some opinion from me about, uh, my opinion on the HR and uh, how you should play it, which, of course, my opinion is solely mine alone. Um, so don't feel like... If you want to, like, debate one of these things, feel free to debate any anything I give in the comments. I'm always happy to talk, and maybe I'll learn something new from you. Uh, but anyway, so I'm going to start with a... Th this video is going to be mostly a overview of the Hunter Ranger and specifically the trapper tree and why it is that the trapper tree is the one we use why is it everybody picks trapper and i'm going to go over that too and uh, i'm going to show a few of the uh a few of the just the little ways you want to play a few of the little tips and tricks that i've picked up over the the time i've been playing the uh ranger um and ah oh, jeez i come Train of thought, totally derailed, went off the tracks, fell off the cliff. Uh, no Back to the Future 3 moment for us. Um, so yeah, and uh, if it's liked, I might continue to do a series where I talk about, like, you know, how to deal with large groups, how to deal with small groups, maybe how, maybe even one that goes with the type, how you would fight certain classes as an HR um, in PvP. But for now, I'm just going to go over this. So the first thing is the main mechanic to the HR that is the most difficult for anybody to grasp is the tab mechanic. And at first glance, it seems very simple. You're ranged, you press tab, you're melee. Press tab again, you're ranged again. Um, what this means is that the HR has six encounters versus the three of every other class with the exception of the control wizard who has four. But their tab is their fourth. And for them, of course, you know, and I'm not going to get into the details of that. The other thing to note is that melee and ranged are... Th there's no minimum range for an HR, so you can shoot right in front of things. Um, and melee and ranged are slight misnomers because a lot of the HR abilities, a lot of the HR encounters are utility. For example, Fox's Shift, as you see on my bar, on my E... It's on the ranged, but it doesn't do any damage. It's about dodging. So a lot of the uh, HR's encounters are utility-based <coughs> and therefore might not actually do something necessarily that you would think immediately goes into range or melee setup. Uh, another example is uh, Oak Skin, the melee version of Binding Arrow. It doesn't do any damage whatsoever. You're just in melee stance. Uh, the second thing, uh, but the, the thing to note about that is that because uh, the Hunter Ranger has six, Cryptic has decided that, you know, most of our encounters are just flat out lower damage than another class's. Um, Constricting Arrow, for example, you know, as you can see, I have it ranked it. I have four points in the ranks, so I'm at, you know, that much damage, of course, you know, up to almost 6,000 for an encounter. On a 17 second cooldown. Now, to be fair, of course, that's that's just what the tooltip shows. It does a lot more uh, when you actually hit with it, um, as I'll show you. And uh, at this point, I'm at four points off of 3k eye level, which just, that bothers me. I'm not going to lie. But um, you you can see that the damage is still lower than maybe another classes. So, but then you have to take into account the Grasping Roots proc, 
And uh, as you'll note, it does a pretty decent chunk of damage right there because I crit on the Constricting Arrow, so the dot off the Grasping Roots crit. Um, the Grasping Roots is about the Trapper specifically. We're still talking about the Ranger. Uh, the other thing to note when you're dealing with that, that is definitely the hardest part. The other thing to note is the dodge mechanic. The dodge mechanic for the HR is, to, in a word, wonky. It's a very, it's a shorter dodge than most others, um, and it consumes less stamina, which is helpful, but you run into the drawback that the animation is so short you think you dodge an ability? No, you really didn't. That's the other thing to note, is that the dodge mechanic can be wonky, can be kind of buggy, and is a bit off. Now the other thing, uh, another thing to take into account is that our at-wills, flat out, suck. They're awful. And that goes down to the root of the problem with the ranger and the other two trees. The at-wills are shit. That's all there is to it. There's some use to careful attack um, and hunt hunter's teamwork. Careful attack and put a really nice DT buff up on the target, which then you stack it with an ability, and suddenly there's all sorts of damage whacking it in the face all at once. Like, all those, of course, a bunch of other procs going in there, as you can see in the log, but careful attack, you know, is hitting for another, you know, about 1,200 apiece. So it really starts to uh, build onto each other. So that that does do something, but you still are concerned about the fact that you're at wills. Other than that, really suck. Like, I'm just shooting him with a, with rapid shot. It's not really that great. It's kind of slow. It's kind of clunky. It, it's not really that pretty. Now, I'm critting a lot, but to be fair, I have a lot of crit. And this won't happen in PvE much. So... Not exactly the best at wills. Something like uh, a great weapon fighter's at wills are far better than an HR's. That, that we're just going to get that out of the way. Let's be honest here. Uh, but of course, then they build off each other, and that's part of the great weapon fighter play style. So it's not that there's something wrong with them. It's that it's a different play style. In other words, you are 90% of the time, if you're playing a trapper, and I'm going to get into why you should, going to be playing... You're gonna your your encounters are your at wills. You're almost always gonna have them up. The only time that you may not actually get them all up is if you are using a charge ability, as the charges do not cool down faster. You don't regain charges faster with the all the buffs that you know lower your cooldowns of everything else. Unfortunately, I would say that you always are gonna be using one charm ability, almost always. Uh. In PvP, you're going to be using, or in PvE, you're going to use Cordon of Arrows. It is our highest damaging encounter by far. Note the difference between this one and that one. As you can see, Cordon is four to five times, is four to three to four times the damage. Yes, yeah, about three times the damage. For an encounter that's slightly longer cooldown, but doesn't really matter, and it's a burst. So, it's a lot more painful in the end um, than constricting. And then you have its melee version is even more damage, although plant growth's dot breaks really easy. Let's be honest here. That dot breaks so easily. It's too easy to break. It's almost... I, I wouldn't rely on it a lot. But in the end, you definitely are going to be using Cordon and uh, Plant Growth as one of your abilities in PvE. But, and then your dailies aren't... The dailies aren't a huge amount of damage, necessarily. I would definitely say, for example, that Ice Knife from a Wizard is probably way more damage than Slasher's Mark. But I'm not going to say quote me on that, as I'm not actually sure how hard a Wizard of similar gear would hit with an Ice Knife. Uh, that's something I may go look into, maybe talk to one of my guildmates and ask them how much damage they hit with their ice knife. Um, along with that, I'm going to note that on single targets, I would always suggest using Slasher's Mark. After some experimentation with it myself, 
it's not the best thing for you, although it's fun as hell to leap across the field like that, but your party will love you. That is the key to the HR. A big part is that you are also a party class, at least slightly. You're not going to give the same buffs that, that a devoted cleric does. No. Nobody does what devoted clerics does. Break the spirit? Hello. Everybody loves break the spirit when it's on the bad guy. But you've still got Fox's shift, which is a party-wide dodge. That's excellent. It's a great ability even in PvP. I just prefer Marauder's Rush myself, but it's still an amazing ability to use. You should stick with that, whatever you feel. And um, Slasher's Mark, again, is a great bonus. A huge amount of stamina or guard restored to your team, and everybody can use that in a dungeon. Everybody! Otherwise, I would use a Seismic Shot for multi-targets, because obviously, you know, Slasher's Mark is going to hit one, but Seismic Shot can hit a lot. Be careful, though, because you can move things out of your party member's way. I've gotten yelled at by Vess more than once when she's on a great weapon fighter and using IBS, and then, nope, I knocked him out of the way. <laughs> Vess was not happy when I did that. Um, I started doing it on purpose. <laughs> anyway, but, so, if you want to learn the HR and you want to be good at it, I know there's a bit of rambling involved, and I'm sorry about that. You definitely need to learn how to take advantage of your stance, mechanics, and accept and understand that your encounters are your at-wills. And that is precisely why we're going to get into the reason you pick the Trapper. And uh, I will say that archery, I feel, is very viable in uh, PV PvE, in dungeons. It is still viable. It's, it can do a lot of damage. A, a shit ton of damage, actually. But... When it comes down to it, it's not that great of, for PvP, in my opinion, although the half-trapper, half-longshot build uh, is actually pretty good. But the the problem with combat is that combat relies a lot on at-wills, and yeah, your at-wills aren't that good. They're just not. Uh... And you just don't get your encounters back as quick as you do with Trapper as you do with Archery or Combat. And with your at-wills not being the greatest things in the world, not really worth. So the reason you take Trapper, and a lot of people use Trapper, is because it basically turns you into an encounter machine. And that is where the pain on your hands comes in. Because when you're really trying, and you might have heard, just heard me cracking my knuckles, I'm going to show you, you want to go through your full rotation in a dungeon, you're constantly using encounters. And it, like, really starts to build up. Now, for some reason, it didn't proc the uh, cooldown reduction correctly. That I hate when it does that. Now, as you'll notice, though, I do have an issue. I've run out of encounters already. All because my cordon was not up yet my rotation on this one was pretty awful to be perfectly honest for whatever reason the one cordon didn't trigger but yeah you'll notice that I'm almost always using that and I'm reapplying careful attack far more than I really need to to be perfectly honest I'm not gonna lie I really don't need to another thing to notice is that cordon will not trigger the uh, um, the D the uh, Ah, I can't speak. Cordon will not trigger the uh, cooldown reduction on the other abilities until after it's actually done the damage versus you shooting it off the first time around. So that's important to note. But anyway, you you constantly shifting back and forth between them. And this applies both in PvE and PvP. A lot of times, uh, you'll notice that if you've watched my other videos, one of the main things I will immediately do is after I finish a melee rotation, I do one dodge back. PvP or PvE, I do at least one dodge back. And the reason why is this gives me a little bit of breathing space versus because, especially if I was running Marauder's Rush or Fox's Shift, I often end up somewhere I really don't want to be. Um maybe a little too close to the bad guys, maybe not quite where I want, or maybe right in front of the Guardian Fighter or Great Weapon Fighter, and nobody wants to be directly in front of them, then you... no, no, then it ends... it does not end well for you. So, again, I'm sorry for the rambling, but I will definitely say that uh, 
if you're going to play a trapper, if you're going to play a hunter ranger, the thing you need to learn is how to handle your stances more than anything else. Your stances are the most important thing to you. And that is the difficult part of it, and you have to take into account, you know, especially if you're playing a trapper, aspect of the serpent can stack up to five times, but you're normally only going to stay in the stance for three. It it happens, it might be worth going for all five, it all depends, but you're normally only going to stay for three, for the rotation through your encounters, and maybe an at-will in, in between. But in the end, your encounters are your main purpose. The thing to understand about the Hunter Ranger is you are a skirmisher. In that respect, you're not unlike the Rogue, but whereas the Rogue's skirmishing is based upon their stealth ability, your skirmishing is based far more upon your roots and your ability to be an annoying asshole. Uh, both in dungeons and in PvP, because in dungeons you can still daze all the mobs. Crushing roots still works on everything but a boss. <laughs> Um, but your roots are a main mechanic of the class if you're playing the trapper. If you're playing the melee or the range, if you're playing combat or archery, they're useful, you know, for archery to keep people off of you, for combat to keep people where you can hit them, but in the end of the day, I would say grasping roots is even more important to the trapper because the entire thing's built around it. But, so I would suggest if you're, if you're looking into playing the ranger and you feel there's some things you still need to learn um just play around a lot with the stances it's all about the stances and learning when and where to shift when and where to shift is the big part generally in a dungeon it's going to be you know one two three shift one two three shift but sometimes you might specifically want another ability for example uh Lost Mouth or Sindrith, in both cases they have that, you know, one-shot ability that can hit you if the tank doesn't block it, and yes, you, you hope your tank will block it, you can't always guarantee they can, or that they're going to, you know, maybe they're not that good a tank, or maybe even if they are a good tank, maybe they got unlucky in Lost Mouth and got, you know, smacked with the f invisible fireball, because anybody who's done Lair or Lost Mouth knows invisible fireballs. So you're going to, maybe you were in melee, maybe you were in mid-rotation. Oh no, the laser's on me. Switch over and use your dodge. That, you, you gotta, you gotta pay attention to what's going on around you, or else you're going to get yourself killed like I do all the time because I stop paying attention, which is dumb. You shouldn't do that. You can also use the dodge to save allies. Of course, it's a great way to do it, it, it if you notice things. Um, so... Again, it's all about knowing when to stance, shift, and when to use what ability in what side. Um, another example is I will often use Marauder's Rush, or Marauder's, I'll often use Marauder's Escape, even if I haven't fully finished my melee uh, rotation in PvP. The reason why is once they've turned to look at me, I know what they're going to do, depending on who they are. Now, if they're a wizard... No, I'm probably not going to do it, because the wizard's just looking to either repel me, or entangling force me, or something of the sort. Especially if he has repel, I'm not going to do it, because then I'm going doubly distant across the field. Um, but I'll often use it to get space to pull down the stealth, because any a forest ghost, you know, it has that cast time on it. Um, or I'll be using Marauder's Rush simply to confuse the enemy. A quick dodge behind the target and Marauder's Escape will make them be like, where the fuck did he go? And then you can Marauders Rush back in for the uh, attack. And I'm sorry that I kept mixing up Escape and Rush. Um, these are many of the little things you can do to play your Hunter Ranger better. Um, so yeah, this was meant to be more like an intro video, and I might try to make like a series where I go over more of the mechanics or uh, maybe specific classes, how you should fight specific classes if you have problems. Uh, if this is something you guys will be interested in watching, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. I would very much appreciate that, you know, and like and subscribe if you'd like. Uh, like I said, just let me know, and I'll see about doing such a thing, maybe going over, uh, I'll maybe talk to some other players who I can duel against and do some practice videos so I can show you guys how you would fight against these specific classes if you'd like. 
So, uh, yes, once again, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, keep on being awesome.